everyone, this is DJ Gavin, and welcome back to another video in Carbo Space Program. So, today it's a little bit different than what I've been doing for a couple days. We're going to be looking at this SSTO, and I'm going to teach you how to build it. So, first off, what is this uh, SSTO? An SSTO stands for Single Stage 2 Orbit. So, this small craft can make it all the way to Kerbin orbit and land back at KSP without refueling or ditching a single stage, let alone activating another one. The plane, it's pretty easy to fly, so it's relatively good for beginners. It also is great for career mode because it has a bunch of science things in it. So if you need to get that, uh, specific science data for that one contract you can get that really easily as long as it's the smaller sciences they all can fit right in here you can probably replace this with a material bay but i have not tested that so that's possibly able to work but no guarantees for that it does have extra fuel though so if you do mess up you do have a little bit of leeway it does have a small limitation which is once you get into orbit, your only choice is to come down from orbit. Unless you have a refueling station of some kind, which you can just pop a docking port on top of here. And add some RCS, and you'd be able to dock to a station in order to refuel it to go to, for instance, um, I bet you could land on Minmus. Possibly. That's stretching it, though, because of how much this can hold. And the fact that it's using a rapier. So... Let's go over what we got real quick. So, we got a FLT-800 fuel tank, which is full. We have a Mark I liquid fuel, ca liquid fuel fuselage. This is dedicated to our ascent out of the atmosphere. 280 liquid units. Um, you can increase this if you do have issues with getting out of atmosphere, but if you do get out of atmosphere and have too much fuel left in here, then you can go ahead and remove them on your next, fl that little bit uh, on your next flight in order to get a little bit more efficiency out of the machine, meaning you could land somewhere else on Kerbin other than, for instance, uh, the KSP landing pad. I forgot the name of it. So, we also have some solar panels on here because this craft does use a lot of SAS in order to maintain its uh, heading while you're heading out of atmosphere. It's a little bit difficult to control in that aspect. You could, however, add in a mini RCS, not RCS, mini reaction wheel, right, this, right into here, and you'd be able to fly a little bit easier, or two, as long as you have enough power for it. This little service bay you can add in whatever you wish as long as it's not too heavy the craft will still fly perfectly fine so um, what else do we have we have four air intakes which all are used for this one single engine and you'll notice something a little bit weird here we have where is it we have a small nose cone like this well I can't put it on now but we have a small nose cone pointing outwards, and we put it in a little bit. This decreases drag, meaning we can get a little bit further with a little less fuel. It helps a little bit, but for this design, if you don't want to mess with this and try and get this to work properly, you don't have to. You can simply remove it and the craft still flies just as well, except a little bit, a slight amount more fuel us usage. It only will matter if you're trying to drain every last drop. We have two, two medium landing gear here in the back, and we have a small landing gear here in the front. I had to add some large ones because of how long the craft was. If the craft was slightly less long, we could have made it, a, made it out with small landing gear, but it wasn't able to be done. So, I'm gonna quickly get all set up and we'll sh I'll show you how to build it and then I'll show you how I fly it and how we land back at KSP. 
All right, we're back. So what I've done is just I've centered the camera around, well, basically around the capsule. Uh, I've selected it as the cockpit, and let's start building it. So on the front, we have a small nose cone right there. Then after the command pod, we have a service bay, 1.25 millimeter. After that, we have a FLT-800 fuel tank. After that, we have a Mark I liquid fuselage, which we will go ahead and set the fuel to 280. And on the end of that, we will add the rapier engine. That's the main body already done. Simple design. Now we will go to aerodynamics. We will go to the adjustable ramp intake. You can use any intake you wish, but I personally use these radial ones. You could probably get away with using one or two of these and it would work just as fine. But because of how it looks, I would. this is how I make it. We're going to set it to radial by hitting R, and we're going to go four times symmetry, and pl put that right there. That's right, right? Yep. And then we will go ahead and grab some solar panels. We will do a similar thing, and we're going to place them right here. We're going to grab the move tool, just tap this, makes the solar panels look a little nicer. We're going to also move them back a little bit. You don't have to do everything exactly as this is done for at least the radially mounted parts. You can move them slightly and it will not affect the design whatsoever, but guaranteed to work if you use this. Next, we're going to go to aerodynamics. We are going to grab the Not this one. Sorry, one moment while I try and find which part I'm supposed to be using. Okay, found it. The We will use the structural wing type A. We will turn off radial mode. And we will place them right here. Here. I just noticed we did place these solar panels in the wrong spot, so we're going to move them all the way back here. Radial, four times. I forgot that's one slight problem with the design. You can't mount anything radially, four times at least. Uh, that will mess with the wings, or else they will not work properly. After that, we will go ahead and grab the wing connector type C. Go ahead and rotate it. I'm just trying to make it look nice. Which way will look better? Eh, this way works. Then we will go ahead and grab the Elevon 1. We put that right here on the edge. We will go ahead and turn off roll, turn off the authority limiter. Next, we're going to take this part of the assembly off, just for a moment, and grab the AVR8 winglet. Turn off radial mode. Go ahead and put that on. I believe we had it like this on the other craft. Yes. We will put it right, we'll put the this part back on, then we will go ahead and grab those winglets yet again, turn off radio mode, and add them right, come on rotation, which way, there. We will add them right here on the sides, we will go ahead and turn off roll, and we'll turn off pitch for these. We want these only to be used for yaw. And in the front, we will also turn off roll and turn the authority limiter up. Next, we'll go ahead and go to the bottom of the craft, grab some medium landing gear, make sure our, ra our radial snap, not radial snap, our snap mode is not going to be snapping these. We want them to be right here. In the front we will also grab some landing gear, the small ones this time. We will turn on snapping, turn off symmetry, rotate it around. We will go back to the back, use the offset tool, and move these back landing gear up very slightly. This will allow us to take off easier, 
Is that correct? Yes. Uh, are we forgetting anything? Yes, we are missing our payload. So, let's go ahead and go right here. And we'll put in our payload some science. You won't be putting too much in here because you can do whatever you wish to do with this and it probably wouldn't matter. You could go ahead and throw an RTG in here and replace the solar panels if we wanted, but RTGs are much heavier than the solar panels. So we are going to be using those in order to save more fuel. Gonna wrap up putting some science in here with a Mr. Ego. There you go. Yep, that's perfect. Go ahead and close that up. Take a look at your creation. If you'd like to make any modifications, I would do them right now. Now, we're going to go ahead and set up the action groups. Custom 1, you're going to be clicking on these radially mounted intakes. We will set them to toggle. We will go to the engine and switch mode. Now we will go back, right click the engine and turn off automatic switching. We want to be using air breathing mode as long as we can without it switching on us when we don't want it to be. So that is the creation complete. Now we will go ahead and go fly it. I will meet you right on the runway. Okay, now that we are on the runway, we will begin our flight. So, what we need to do with this creation is we just hit Z to, m to bring it to full throttle, hit T to put on SAS, and hit spacebar. We'll wait for a moment for those engines to warm up a little bit. Once we hit 30 meters per second, we will throttle down to 75% throttle. And then once we hit 90 meters per second, we will tap the S key to pull up. You don't want to hit hit it too hard or else we might pull up too much and hit the back end. Once we are in the air, we can go ahead and full throttle, pull up the landing gear, and go at about 30 degrees straight into the air. Now at this moment, you can hit F2. If you're running Steam, you can hit F12 twice, taking a screenshot of that wonderful uh, aerodynamic debugging mode as you're toggling it back off. Okay, once we have hit 2,500 meters, we will pull up to roughly 60 degrees. Pull up. Hit F to recalibrate our SAS to do what we want it to do. And now we will wait for a moment as we ascend into the air. Now, you're going to want to watch up here at the top of the screen. As soon as this hits 85,000, uh, 85, you're going to want to nose down dramatically to 5 degrees. Once you hit about 75,000 meters, we're going to be nosing down to the 30 degree mark. Trying to smooth it out. Now that we've hit the 85,000 mark, we will nose down. And now we will begin to pick up speed. We're going to be wanting to be very careful during this stage because this is where it all usually can go wrong. We use too much fuel. We burn up in the atmosphere because, of we're go because we are going too fast and other such things. So we're going to try and bring this right to 5 degrees. And now we will wait as we accelerate, still trying to bring it to 5 degrees, just about exactly. We want to get it as close as possible to that because we will go up very slightly, but we will be going forward very fast. So, we're going to be waiting for a moment as we wait for the next event to happen, which is you will start to see the heat bars up here on your parts. Don't worry too much, as this will happen with SSTOs. We are going to be wanting to pitch up very slightly when this happens. 
So, if right here in the front is where we're going to be watching. That's where we're going to be worrying the most because that's our capsule. So now you can see the nose cone and the capsule are warming up. We're going to want to nose up very slightly to try and keep those above, for, keep those below 100%. Don't worry about all of the overheating things. Just keep an eye on the front. If this nose cone goes, we will go. We can start to nose down again once we are exiting the atmosphere slightly. That way we can start accelerating again and pick up speed. But as you can see, we are not moving as quickly as we were before. And we are actually starting to slow down a lot. We're going to be we're going to keep nosing down and now we're going to open the map view. So, we did a pretty decent job. We could have done better. And we're going to wait till we hit 22,500 and then we are going to go ahead and nose up. Roughly 25 degrees. Our craft's going to be fighting us because of how fast we are going forward. But we will continue doing that as we look at the map. We are now at 30,000 for our apoaps. Pretty decent. At least for this, this ship. Other ships usually get a lot higher. Somewhere on the 40,000 range, I believe, is what most of the SSDOs I look at you get to. Okay, that's our engine going out. So, we're going to switch back to this view. Hit 1 and nose straight up. We're going to try and aim for the 45 marker, that way we can, we're can we not fighting drag, but we're going up at the same time. We're going to try and maintain that while we open the map view. Watching that app apps, we don't want to go too high. Sixty-five, seventy. stop. Once you see that, go ahead and mark prograde on your SSA. SAS, and we can check our fuel real quick. We're going to alt right click both tanks, and we're going to hit out on the liquid fuel tank. As you can see, we had a little bit of extra fuel left over. That'll help us if we want to do some uh, atmospheric traveling once we come back into the atmosphere later. But it's a bit wasteful for what we're doing. But we can keep it on board just in case we undershoot or overshoot. If we overshoot, we can always turn around and fly back. If we undershoot, we can always fly forward and continue towards the uh, landing pad. And now is a time game. We're going to go to four times acceleration. And we're going to watch this map. If we did this right, our orbit should be nearly complete. We're going to wait till it says T minus 20 seconds. There we go. Get out of map view. Make sure we're still marked prograde. Now, as you can see, this altimeter, not altimeter, this vertical speed monitor is getting really close to starting to drop. So, once that hits that, we're going to hit Z and accelerate full force forward. And we're going to try and bring this Apple Apps directly on top of us. We're going to want to bring it to T minus uh, roughly 1. So we're going to keep aiming up. And aim down if we go past it. This is just to make sure that our orbit's nice and circular. And once our periapsis turns, in, turns around and comes to us, we have completed our orbit. Now, we did make a bit larger, larger of an orbit than usual, but we still have plenty of fuel. If you look at our tank, we have plenty. This is enough to deorbit and probably slow down if we did make a mistake on our, our descent. So we're gonna go ahead and F5 just in case we overtime, overdo the time warp, and we will time warp. We're going to want to get right above this continent, and then we're going to be preparing for what we're going to be doing next.
Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and stop time warp. Hit M. We're going to do whatever sand things we were going to be doing. So, let's go ahead and grab some experiments. Some mystery goo. Some gravity data. Some seismic data. Oh, we can't do seismic data right now. Forgot. And log some temperature. We're going to go ahead and close that. And we're going to hit F5. And we're going to plan right about here at the edge of this continent. We're going to add a maneuver. This is just so you can get a better estimation of where you're going. And since we're over this continent, I believe, if we're, I'm correct, we can shoot in the middle of these two peninsulas. At least I think that's what they are. Go a little bit like that. Mm. We'll go a little bit further back. Hit F5, and we will go ahead and whoops, click on this orange orbit and warp to next maneuver. That'll save us a little bit of time and let it automatically do its thing for us. Got about a, about a minute until we hit that node. So we're going to go and hit the maneuver button on the SAS. And prepare for what we are going to do next. Which is to do our retrograde burn. Since our retrograde marker is below us, we're going to be waiting until roughly it hits that. Which is our maneuver. So we'll time warp a little bit. About five seconds. And then once we hit zero, we will full throttle... Full throttle burn for a moment, and then we will prepare to slow down and get that nice and done. Perfect. We don't have to have that exactly because we will be changing our uh, direction during our descent, so we probably will be slowing down. And right about here is when we'll know if we did it right or wrong. So, time warp. We can wait until we hit roughly 60,000, and then we'll have to start preparing. Since we have such a shallow, shallow descent, we will be not needing anything related to heat protection, so that's why this craft is able to work. And now we're flipping. So now we can go ahead and start braking. We're going to want to keep this bottom of the craft aim towards our destination. That way we can try and use our wings as brakes. If we are going to be passing the Kerbal Space Program uh, Center, we can nose down and we will slow down while we descend. We're going to start getting atmospheric effects. We won't need to worry about these. If we do start to overheat because we did came, come in in a deep angle, we will be able to just keep spinning the craft around, which will prevent it from overheating. We just want to, if it does overheat, well, get close to overheating, we will just want to try and prevent that part from being exposed to the reentry forces. As you can see, every time we go up and down, we shave some meters per second off of our orbit, orbital speed. We're going to switch this to surface now, because this is what we're going to be going off of here in a moment. And it's going to get harder and harder to control the craft as we keep going down. Swinging side to side also works. As long as you do it equally, you will always land at your destination. This prevents you from changing your course up and down at least, but will probably affect your fourth, your direction left and right. Hope I'm saying that right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and look at the map and see what we're aiming at. We're going to hit the mountains. So we're going to aim up and try and get this right around the Kerbal Space Center. That's our goal, to keep 
the end of this near the Kerbal Space Center. We might have undershot it, but we can deal with it. We're just going to keep holding S to bring us closer to the center. Our Apple Apps is actually going above us now. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and hit that one custom uh, the custom action that we made earlier and we're gonna need to prepare to use our engines for this descent so we're gonna land right in the grasslands right next to the center we're gonna try and aim closer without using our engines to save us a little bit of money although it's not important we will want to be doing that because it will save us time refueling if we do reuse the craft literally We're going to go ahead and go with prograde. Going to gain some speed while doing this. We're going to... We may need to shoot left a little bit, but that's not important as of right now. We still got a lot of time until we do hit the ground. Okay, we're gonna turn back, turn it back to stability assistance, and we're gonna pull up, bringing us closer to the center, while shaving off some speed. We will probably not be making it all the way to the center. We could revert if we wanted to get it perfectly, but. We will make it very close at the least. Aim down using prograde to help us. Once we are at about 30 degrees, we can just hold it ourselves. We are going to be a bit far off, so we're going to go to the left and pull up. Go ahead and time warp. Pull up, probably to the r to the left in our case. Aiming a little bit down so we maintain our speed, so we don't drop out of the sky. We want our apple apps to come closer to us. The center is getting very close now. We are very, very slowly making progress toward the center. We're going to aim down and a little bit to the left, time warp. Okay, now we can go ahead and pull up very slightly. We can see our shadow now, so now we know where we're going to be landing. Just a tad off. It'll make it easier for our landing anyways, since we'll be able to use a slight amount of energy and power to provide enough thrust to keep us in the air, but not accelerate. We're going to go ahead and hit the landing gear. Hit brakes. And we did not set this up while we were in the space plane hangar. But we're going to be turning these brakes completely off in the front. That way we don't break anything. And it looks like we might actually perfectly land this. Gonna nose down so we maintain some speed. That was funny. The speed was 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we're gonna concentrate right on this runway. We're gonna aim for the center line. Make sure our brakes and landing gear are down. It would be a bad thing if we didn't have those on. Although the brakes could wait until we hit the ground, it's nice to be decelerating once we actually hit it. Gonna pull up, leading some speed, 
going to want to hit somewhere between 60 and 30. 30 is when this will start to fall very fast. So we're going to hit 60 and do a touchdown. And there we go. Brakes are pulling us. Don't tilt over. Whoops. We didn't make it, but we just messed up slightly. So we're going to try that one more time, making it a little easier for us to land. So we know that now we can give ourselves a little leeway. It's always nicer to overshoot than undershoot. So we're going to be aiming for this other continent. Hit the maneuver. Time warp. Now, hit zero, burn, go a little bit over. Okay, we're gonna try that again. Time accelerate. We did too good of a braking job last time. So we're gonna ease it up a little bit on the braking. We can always break straight over the uh, landing pad and come back to it. We're just going to let our craft flail, helping a little bit to stay where we want it. This should be plenty. Turn off time acceleration. Now we're going to be aiming a little bit to the left this time. There's the space center again. Our maneuver every time that we have is going to be different depending on the craft. If you do modify this one, you will not have a guarantee to uh, to be able to use the exact same thing I used with the orbit I had. But you can always try it. As long as you have a little bit of engine fuel left, you'll be able to make it no matter what you do. Normally, at least. If you land on the other side of Kerbin, well, you probably aren't going to be able to fly all the way back unless you brought a lot more fuel. You might be able to make it with the fuel that's on board. Flailing up and down. Our wings are losing their ability to move us. It's getting a lot harder. Atmospheric drag's coming in. So now, everything we do will affect where we land. So it's always better to land ahead of it. So we're just going to follow prograde. We're going to watch this very closely. Aiming down to bring it down. We are waving a lot. I think SAS is overcompensating. Hurtling straight towards the landing pad. Aim down. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Whoops, too far. Aim up. Perfect. A thousand meters per second, that's not great. Go ahead and nose up and nose down to bleed some speed. This is a lot faster. Okay, now we're gonna hold. Time accelerate. Aim down. Time accelerate. Prepare for a landing. G brakes. Turn our brakes in the front off. Aimed a little bit too far to the right. Leading speed over the uh, over the landing pad. I'm going to want to be careful to not go under 90. 
while we're this far, we can start to bleed more. 80, 70. Then I want to go down, aim up slightly, and now we're going to break by pulling up. This time a lot better. You can take as much time as you want as long as we have some runway. Try and bleed it. Touchdown. No SES. There we go. Successful landing. You can go ahead and take a screenshot and enjoy what you have done. If you're wondering how I did those screenshots, I just hit F2 and it disables the UI. So, that's gonna be it. Our Kerbo's gonna go ahead and leave his tomb. A little bit warm. Come run over here. As you can see, the vehicle in comparison to the Kerbals is not very large. That's going to be it for this episode. Hope you liked the video. Hit the like button if you liked what I did today. Comment down below what you want to see next and subscribe if you liked my content. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Kerbal Space Program. Have a nice day. Bye.